r slash no sleep everyone in my town dies at 30 i have 12 hours left my name is eve and every single person born in my town dies when they turn 30. it's not some tragic accident or illness that claims them it's a rule a rule no one talks about except in whispers over graves shared like a secret no one really wants to keep it's just accepted woven into the fabric of gray hollow like the mist that surrounds us clinging to everything and everyone I have 12 hours left until my 30th birthday, and I'm terrified. Grey Hollow looks like any other sleepy small town, at least on the surface. Quaint houses with white picket fences, quiet streets, friendly neighbors who wave from their porches. But it's all a facade. The smiles don't reach anyone's eyes here, and the atmosphere always feels off. The town itself is ancient, older than most of the maps it appears on, nestled deep in a forest where the trees grow twisted and thick their roots curling like claws through the earth. No one from outside ever stays. Visitors pass through sometimes, confused as to why their GPS sent them down a narrow, overgrown road leading to us. But they never stay for long. And the ones who do leave? They never come back. But those of us born here, we don't leave. Believe me, I've tried. Growing up in Grey Hollow, you learn about the curse early. There's no formal lesson, no big revelation. It's just. Known. Every child, every teen, every adult knows they won't see past 30. It's not spoken about, not in public, not with your friends, and certainly not with your family. But it's there, lurking behind every decision, every life choice. Why bother planning for the future when you don't have one? Some pretend to ignore it. They marry, they have children, they start businesses as though life is normal. But there's always a shadow, a countdown ticking away in the background. Most people in town don't even make it to 30 plagued by nightmares, whispers, and strange incidents that seem to follow them in their final months. The lucky ones, if you could call them that, drop dead in their sleep, quietly, peacefully. The unlucky ones. Well, their ends are far worse. My older brother, Simon, turned 32 years ago. We were always close, like most siblings born into this cursed place. He was my protector, my guide, the one who helped me make sense of the madness. But in the weeks leading up to his birthday, something changed in him. He became paranoid, jumpy, constantly looking over his shoulder as if he was being watched. The night before he died, he pulled me aside, his face pale, sweat beating on his forehead. He gripped my arm so hard it left bruises. They're coming for me, Eve. Don't let them get you. Don't trust them. I begged him to explain, but all he did was shake his head. Then, just like that, he was gone. People said he dropped dead like everyone else. But I knew better. I saw the scratches on his bedroom walls, the shattered glass from his broken window, and the streaks of blood across the floor. No one else noticed. It was as if they were blind to the truth, willfully ignorant of the horrors lurking beneath the surface. It's easier that way, I suppose, to pretend it's just fate, to go quietly into death without fighting back. Now it's my turn. I'll be 30 tomorrow, and every hour that passes feels like a ticking bomb in my chest. The strange things started happening last night. I had tried to stay awake, determined to outlast the darkness, but at midnight, I heard it, three slow, deliberate knocks at my window. I live on the second floor. There's no balcony, no way for someone to reach the glass. Yet there it was, clear as day. Three sharp taps, like fingernails scraping against the pane. I didn't sleep after that. I couldn't. The scratching continued for hours, shifting from the window to the walls, then the ceiling as if something was moving through the house, watching, waiting. When dawn finally came, the noise stopped, but the sense of being watched lingered, like a cold breath on the back of my neck. I had no choice. If I was going to survive this, I had to find answers. There had to be a way out of this nightmare. I spent the day at the old town library, a place no one ever goes anymore. The building itself is older than the town, its wooden beams creaking under the weight of secrets. Dust clung to the shelves like a thick layer of fog, and the air smelled of mildew and forgotten things. The library was the one place the town couldn't keep clean, couldn't maintain that perfect facade. It was as if the truth had seeped into the very walls, resisting every attempt to cover it up. I scoured every old document, every forgotten book. I read about the town's founding, about the strange practices of the early settlers, but nothing concrete. Hours passed, and with every tick of the clock, my heart pounded harder in my chest. Time was running out. And then I found it. An old leather-bound journal, hidden behind a row of faded encyclopedias, its pages brittle and yellowed with age. 
It was dated over 150 years ago, written by one of the town's founders, Richard Gray. My hands shook as I read it, each word a knife to my gut. The journal told of an ancient ritual, a pact made with another worldly force. The settlers had been desperate, facing famine, disease, and endless hardship. They performed the ritual, offering a sacrifice to the entity in exchange for eternal prosperity. But the price was steep. The lives of every person born here, snuffed out by their 30th birthday, to sustain the entity. The ritual had to be maintained, generation after generation, or the town would fall into ruin, consumed by the very force they had bargained with. The council knew. The elders knew. They all knew, and they kept it a secret, feeding us to the entity like lambs to the slaughter. I slammed the journal shut, bile rising in my throat. This was it, the truth, the horror that no one wanted to acknowledge. I had less than 12 hours to live, and I didn't know what to do. I spent the rest of the day in a daze, barely able to think straight. When night fell, the knocking started again. But this time, it wasn't just the window. It was the door, the walls, the floor beneath my feet. It was everywhere, surrounding me, closing in. And then I heard his voice. Eve. It was Simon. His voice was faint, like a whisper carried on the wind, but it was unmistakable. It was coming from the attic. Help me, Eve. I froze. Simon was dead. I knew that. But his voice, it was so real. So familiar. My heart ached to believe it was him, that somehow, he had found a way back. But deep down, I knew better. This wasn't Simon. This was something else, something using his voice, his memory, to lure me in. The scratching grew louder, more frantic. And then, without warning, everything went quiet. I turned slowly, dread coiling in my stomach like a living thing. Standing in the corner of my room was Simon. Or at least, something that looked like him. His skin was pale, too pale, like all the blood had been drained from his body. His eyes were hollow, black pits, but his lips stretched into a smile, too wide, too unnatural. Eve, he said softly, stepping closer. It's time. I backed away, my legs trembling. This wasn't my brother. It couldn't be. Come with me, the thing whispered, extending a hand toward me. You don't have to be afraid. My back hit the wall, and I shook my head, tears blurring my vision. No, I whispered. You're not real. The thing wearing Simon's face chuckled, a dry, rasping sound that sent chills down my spine. Oh, I'm real, little sister. And so is the curse. You can't run from it. It's already inside you. The room grew colder, the air heavy with something dark, something ancient. My breath hitched, and I could feel the presence of the entity all around me, pressing in, suffocating. There's no escaping this, the thing whispered. You belong to the town now. Just like I do. I bolted, tearing through the house and out into the night. The mist was thick, wrapping around me like icy fingers, but I didn't stop. I ran, as fast as I could, through the empty streets, past the dark houses where I knew people were hiding behind closed doors, pretending they didn't hear the screams. I didn't stop until I reached the edge of the forest. The trees loomed over me, dark and twisted, their branches like skeletal hands reaching for me. But I had no choice. I plunged into the woods, the ground slick with mud, branches whipping at my face and arms as I stumbled deeper into the darkness. The mist thickened, swirling around me like a living thing, and I could hear the sound of footsteps behind me, slow and deliberate. I didn't dare look back. I just kept running, my breath coming in ragged gasps, my heart pounding in my chest. Finally, I reached the clearing. In the center stood an old stone altar, cracked and worn by time, but unmistakable. This was the place, the place where it had all begun. The place where the founders had performed the ritual. With trembling hands, I pulled the journal from my bag and opened it to the page with the incantation. My voice was barely a whisper at first, but as the wind picked up, swirling around me, I shouted the words louder and louder forcing them out with every ounce of strength I had left. The ground trembled beneath me, the air growing thick with the presence of the entity. I could feel it, pressing in from all sides, clawing at me, trying to stop me. But I kept going. I had to. There was no other way. The altar cracked, and a burst of black smoke erupted from it, swirling around me like a tornado. I screamed, feeling it tear at my skin, at my soul, but I didn't stop. I couldn't stop. Not now. With one final word, the smoke thinned, retreating back into the ground, and the forest fell silent. It was over. I collapsed to the ground, my body shaking with exhaustion. But as I lay there, 
The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. The curse wasn't just broken. It had taken something from me, something I could never get back. I wasn't the same anymore. I could feel it inside me, a darkness, a power that hadn't been there before. I had defeated the entity, but in doing so, I had become part of it. I had 12 hours left until my 30th birthday. Hours until I would discover what I had truly become. And I wasn't sure if I would survive the night. Thank <laughs> you.